Hi, and welcome to Peak Human Performance. Today's workout is a beginner workout, how to coach a beginner. The goal is first of all to screen them, see how they move, assess their mobility, shoulder mobility, ankle mobility, hip mobility, knee mobility, but also finding out their strength and their weaknesses. Goal number two is to give them an insight on how you work as a personal coach. Goal number three, is to pick them up where they are. So you don't want to overexpose them and so having them being sore for 10 days or one week or two weeks. So today's workout is out of the standard program we call the Hello World. The Hello World will focus on a full body workout. We'll be targeting the hamstring, we will be targeting the, the quads, mainly antagonistic muscle groups, we will be targeting the pec and the back using different uh, working planes. Let's get started. For the first workout, we will be doing laying leg curl for the hamstring, and then we will be alternating this with lunges for better mobility and working on uh, posture, on uh, stretching the iliopsoas, teaching the client to work full range. Let's get started with the laying leg curl. I will start with a tiny weight. We have here 375. Okay, let's go. All right, okay. Let's check the weight with few reps. Maybe do three reps and see how it goes. The weight is good so far. So let's go maybe for two more reps. Okay, so now I would ask the client just uh, to check on him how he feels with the weight. Can we increase a little bit in order to be able to do proper 12? tiny bit, a little bit. This weight is okay? Okay, fine. So let's go. Let's finish six more. Right. Okay. Here, typical, typical mistake with beginners is the orientation of the fit. You see one foot is showing to another direction. Try to have both feet dorsiflexed, both feet the same, same direction. Yes, very good. Okay, let's go for three more. Excellent. Nice. So it's a controlled manner to execute the exercise, nothing explosive, maybe two seconds concentric, and then four seconds eccentric. Okay, last rep. Awesome. Good job. Okay. All right, let's go for a break. Here we will do typically a break of 45 seconds to 60 seconds, check on your client on heartbeats, how he feels, and then if he's okay, so we can go for the A2, which is working lunge. All right, in this special case, we have for you a bonus. Ahmed has flat feet, unaddressed flat feet. So that's what we saw just right now. Hence, one trick which is amazing, which helps your client to work on improving, it would not improve right away, but it will trigger the right stimulus for the feet muscle to stay upright. One trick I learned from Charles Poliquin and Kim Gus are to lift the toe of the front foot. When you lift the toe of the front foot, the weight distribution on the foot is more applying a tripod principle and the foot will adjust itself way better than if you just go flat foot. Okay, Ahmed will de demonstrate this. When he lifts the toe, his foot is, the arc is there. Put please this down, you see the arc is gone. That's the trick. When we lift the toe, the arc is back again. And all those muscles which are here now are activated in order to keep the foot in right position. After this, we would be going for three more rounds of this or two more rounds. It depends really on his recovery. See, check on faster expression while he's doing his exercises. Try to ask him how he feels. And he usually knows how much he can uh, give. And again, for the first session, it's always key not to overexpose. It's rather to wake up the muscles, to teach him proper 
uh, application of the tempo on uh, and uh, also of their exercises, but not to overexpose. You don't want them to miss their training for two weeks. All right, so now we are going to the superset number two. So we have a B1, a B2. So it's a pressing movement combined with a pulling movement. So we will start with a bench press. We don't like to go for a completely flat bench press. Our flat is actually a 15 degrees or 10, 15 degrees bench. Why? Because it puts way less tension on the shoulders, especially for beginners. At the beginning, you would like, of course, to teach them how they uh, bench properly. A bench is more complicated than laying leg curl. In a laying leg curl, we, uh, we are guided. Here, we have a lot more freedom to execute the exercise. Hence, proper technique is key. Right. So here, what I teach is proper position first of the bench vis-a-vis -vis the bar. You don't want it to be far too way behind you. We don't want it to be too near to you. So the right distance to the bar is key. Also the height of the bar, depending on the arm length and so on and so forth. Those has to be adjusted right from the beginning. Let's get those checked up. The position as maybe the bench is slightly too much in this direction. Uh, I would say a general rule is having the bar above the eyes and then the spotter will still have to help you to unrack the bar. Second rule is when you bench and when you rack the bar, you should go on this uh, J colors and then slide down. Never try to basketball the bar. This is a risk for decapitation, okay? I have seen it too often where people get stuck here they raise the bar and the bar stays here. Okay, a risk of really decapitation. So always go safe here and then slide down, boom. So from here, I see his eyes are a little bit too far this way. Let's correct Ahmed. Let's uh, correct the bench slightly backward for Ahmed. Let's get, give it a try again. Here we go. It looks good for me. Ahmed will take the bar biacromial with an earling, roughly with an earling. Okay, teach your client beginner to always use the thumb, never false grip, okay, always full grip. For the unracking, you just press it up. Okay, so that's the begin beginning of range of motion. When you wanna rack the bar, then you go this way first, and then you go down. From this direction, straight, arm straight, completely straight. So we have a form which, which is a J form. It w works this way, and then here straight. Okay, it's not straight, it's not a straight path. Okay, it's a J, then straight, straight, and then you turn back. Okay, so I will guide you for the first reps, touch, and then up, and then you come back over the shoulder. Now alone, let's go for two reps. Awesome. Here, basically, two rules. We want the elbow to have the elbow always under the bar to be efficient, biomechanically efficient. On the other side, we would like to end the range of motion with the bar being exactly perpendicular to on the shoulders. Okay, let's go for two more reps, Ahmed. Touch here. Yes. And then you go up. Okay, very good. One more. Okay, J. And then you go down. Awesome. Good job. Two more things I would here correct or at least ask the new trainee to respect is first of all, the wrist position. So usually people with weak wrists, they would go this way. The heavier we go with the bar, the more they do this kind of wrist extension. This is a blocked road. So if they get stronger while holding their wrist this way, it's very difficult for them to come back. So it's key and essential from the beginning to teach proper grip position. If you see the weight is just too, too much and he drops down, then go lower and teach him to come back to the right position of uh, the grip. With all the training, with the deadlifts, with the Romanian deadlift, all, all the exercises, his grip will ultimately get stronger and he will be able to hold the bar properly. That's the first thing. The second thing is a bench press is a full body exercise. It's a multi-joint exercise. Even if we see only the arms moving, still the force, the contra force to hold the bar and move the bar is coming from the legs as well. And the legs are very important in a way that they bring in a kind of horizontal force into the construction. And then the whole construction, the whole body is uh, stronger and prepared for heavier weight. Uh, people, for example, will lift their legs while benching. It's basically biomechanically inefficient. So you need the force coming from the, the legs. So I teach them to press not this direction, but an angle of 60 degrees roughly, okay? 
Let me go under the bar and show you how it looks like when I'm activated vis-a-vis -vis when I'm not activated. So I am rack. So now I'm not activated. My legs are not applying getting any force from the ground. Now I'm activated. Okay? I'm strong. Way stronger. Again, you need to think about exercises like a bench press, like the squat. It's like you are a crane, you are uh, holding a load, and if you are applying the force properly, using the force properly, the anchoring properly, you will be stronger. The body is safe and can recruit way more muscle fibers as if the brain senses, no, my construction is weak, so you will uh, just shut down. Enough said, let's go start it. With the beginner, be always behind him, but not in the way of his vision field, okay? Help him to unrack, get into position. That's our position. Make sure you are applying the force with the legs, okay? You press 60 degrees down with the legs, you are stable, and then you go down, touch, and up. Awesome, good job. Okay, think about the J, the J, straight, straight, and then yes. Okay, awesome, good job. Okay, that was too low. Touch here. Okay. Okay, J and up. The wrists as well. Try to keep the wrists straight. Yes. Okay. How is the weight? Is that okay? It's okay. Good. Let's go for five more. Try to feel the J. Okay. Okay. What I like to do as well is I go on their knees while they are working out and just check if they are really activating. Okay, I see there is a strength here. Right, nice, very good. Let's go for last one. All right, from here you help him to go back and then rack safely. Now, a component of breathing. Breathing usually, if the weight is a medium weight, not too heavy, then usually the breathing will be out when you press out. So when you go for the concentric, you exhale, here you inhale. If it gets heavier, breathing techniques can vary. So now we are going for the machine row. So important here is to teach proper movement. So the first movement is he closes the shoulders first without bending the elbow, and then he would pull. Let's go. Correct. We typically go here for a neutral position of the hand, neutral. This is pronated, this is supinated. Neutral is uh, the easier and a stronger for a beginner. Okay, we control that the shoulders are relaxed, not lifted. And then we are pulling in one to two seconds, control, and then three to four seconds back. He opens the shoulders, closes the shoulders, and then pulls. Right, we look always forward, proper breathing. So when he pulls, he exhales, and then here, he inhales. Good job. Okay, now we are going for the third and last superset, which involves a pressing movement and a pulling movement using other working planes. So we will be going for the machine overhead press combined with the lat pull down. All right, let's get started. For the shoulders, I like always to warm up using a light weight and using small increments to ensure the shoulder is getting really proper warm up. Okay, all right. So here, the elbow, Ahmed, the elbow is under the bar here. Is as if it would be a bench press, and then you just pre press up. Yes. Okay. Check on your client's mobility. Ask if they feel any tension, any pain. Do you feel any tension, any pain on the shoulders, Ahmed? Any pain? Nothing? Okay. So let's go maybe for two more reps. All right, so we did uh, a first warm-up uh, warm set using two and a half each side. So I checked on him. He said the weight was light, so we are going or double that. So we're going for five kg each side. Let's get started. One, 
two, three, touch, and now. Two, one, two, three, four, and now. How is the weight, Ahmed? It's good for 12? Nice, okay, let's finish. And you don't have to do 12. If heavy, then you can go for 10 as well. 10, 11, 12 are all good. A nice rep. Okay. Awesome. Good job. Nice. That's a good weight for 12. So we would do 45 second to 60 second of break, and then we will go for the antagonistic movement, which is a lat pull down. Here also we would go for a neutral grip. Same thing, principle on the machine rope. So here you get the shoulder blades down first, and then you pull down. Okay. Shoulder blade together, down, and then you pull down. Nice. And then when you go up, take your time, three to four seconds, and then go straight, and then go back again, and pull down. Awesome. Very good. Let's do a few reps. Maybe three more. Warming up. Okay, good. So we uh, went for 20 kg. Now let's go for the working set. One to two seconds down, and then three to four up control. Okay. So here, make sure to teach them to go always to the front. Why? Because we want to stretch the uh, latissimus and go full range. This will teach them, also prepare them for a chin-up later on. Very good. Also, here we will go to 45 second to 60 second of break, and then we go for two more rounds, up to three. Here we go. So we have done, just to recap, three supersets. The two first supersets, A1 and A2, were targeting the hamstring and the quads, looking to ankle mobility, knee mobility, hip mobility, etc. Then the second superset, B1 and B2, was a pressing movement combined with an antagonistic pulling movement. It was 15 degrees bench press combined we, with a machine rope. Then we went over to work on the third plane of a pushing and pulling movement. We did overhead press machine combined with a lat pull down. So in total, we did three sets of each circuit and we did 12 reps each station. The breaks were something between 45 seconds and 60 seconds. So now, it always depends really on your trainee. If your trainee is a complete beginner, the first session could be, for example, applying just eight reps. Second session could be, for example, using 10 reps. The third session, as it was now for Ahmed, was 12 reps. And then you always look into the facial expression. You look into how they are doing. You ask them how they feel the weight, you should never overexpose a client from the beginning. If you like this workout, you can purchase it on our website. Search for the program Hello World. We have two versions, Hello World 1, which we ju just did, and there is a progressive version, which is Hello World 2. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you like it, please do like, share, and subscribe, and share it especially with people who may need it. Thank you for watching.